So for this one, we want to kind of keep our same user persona and we want to find a different version of her. So it doesn't have to be the same exact woman because you're not going to say, find the same model, but you could find someone very similar age wise. And for this one, she's more serious and she is more reserved. So it's going to match the overall style. So we're going to build everything around um, this woman. So I'm going to do a select subject and quickly mask her. It's gonna, I think I even want to make her black and white because this is not a bright, fun, vivid one. This is more relaxed. So let's see if I can go to adjustments and add a black and white layer. My black and white layer and I'm just going to do a quick black and white. And I'm going to go and mask this black and white so it only affects the layer below. So I'm just holding down option. Holding down option, you see that little arrow? And I'm just going to connect this black and white adjustment layer just connecting it down there below so it only affects that layer. So let's make her a tiny bit smaller so we can have some room for some typography. So let's bring in our type choice. Let's see what kind of type choice might work well here. And you don't have to just use Google Fonts. If you have the Adobe subscription, you could do Adobe Fonts and do the same thing. It has a little area where you can do the thickness and thinness of the typography. You can browse fonts. Oh, and they have all sorts of cool tags that might be helpful for brainstorming different types of typography. So we can go to font properties, maybe reduce the thickness quite a bit. Ooh, Montserrat is really nice. There's Montserrat, it has a lot of different weights. So the more font weights you have, the more flexibility you have. I love a typeface that has lots of different font weights. So I finally ended up with the typeface. Futura PT. I used a light and I also showed contrast by using a demi bold. So just doing a simple headline, the reserved one, elegance and sophistication with a focus on tradition. So I'm describing what that is, but also showcasing a type choice. So let's do the same thing and put her on a background. Let's do a nice dark background for this. Let's expand that over the entire document and bring that down below. What I also want to do is when you during styles, there's also talking about textures. So for this, I thought maybe a gold texture would would match really well with the black and and kind of this color that I picked out. So let's see if I can't go and type in textures and pixels and uh, gold texture. See if I can't find something I could put over the typography. So let's first try out this one texture here. So I'm going to do the same thing on my texture on top. I'm going to hold down Option and clip it to the typography choice or the typography layer below. Clip it. And then I think that's a little too bright orange. So I can simply do a simple adjustment. Bring down that saturation a little bit just to bring in more of a deeper, rich gold, just like that. So it's not as orangey. A little bit. So I thought that added a little texture to that uh, if we wanted to play around with texture for a style. So let's do the same thing. Let's bring in relevant photography. So this photography might feature darker backgrounds and might feature slate um, materials that, that the sushi is resting on. It might feature more stone. So I found two photos on pexels that could really fit. This is that slate stone that it's resting on that I was thinking about. And here's another one that focuses on that traditional sushi, fresh, it's expensive, it's, it's valuable. Um, that type of look. So we can arrange these in a certain way to kind of, you're really telling a story here with these. So however you feel like you can best tell the story. I'm going to bring that in the background. And I don't want the sushi to distract too much. So let's see if I can't bring her up a little bit so that the type is not covered up too much. And let's start to pull maybe a few colors. So let's get a rectangle tool. I'm just going to, because this is a good area to maybe add some color boxes. And I want to do kind of a darker gray. And I am just going to hold down Option and drag. I'm just going to get another copy of this. Let's bring out some of the gold color that we used. And let's make another copy. And what other color? Maybe kind of a cream, light gray color. We can even adapt something from the sushi colors that could be a possible inspiration for colors later on is uh, bringing out the color of the sushi. So I'm just kind of showing a, a brief little color palette here. We can also go source some logos that's going to match this style. So let's go to Behance and they talked about seal graphics. 
And so I'm going to search for that right away, kind of see what kind of options we have come up. So here's an example that uses gold. It doesn't feel like a sushi place, does it? This feels more like a steakhouse. So you just need to be careful about what we're choosing and make sure it matches. It's going to take you a few minutes to kind of find something. This is interesting. I really like the, the line art here. And everything has the same thickness, so it's kind of monoline. And this has a wonderful seal graphic. So I'm going to scroll down here. There is uh, an excellent example here that I can use. And you could just take a screenshot, like a, just like a little screenshot to give the client an idea of the look and style. And once again, make sure you give this person credit. So Kevin Craft, I'm going to go ahead and copy his link and have that nearby so he can get proper credit for this awesome look. So since I like the monoline look, I went ahead and typed in monoline logo and I found one that I thought would look really good as well. So among these seal graphics, I thought this one kind of had a nice traditional seal look to it, as well as this one, kind of the circular typography presentation uh, looked really nice and professional. And I want to bring out that gold idea too. So gold foil logo. So gold foil is kind of that gold that you see printed and it shines. It's an actual foil that they can imprint just like this. That's kind of gold foil stamping. So that could be a, an example that I can show in my style presentation. Ooh, that one's a great example too. It would be great to find one with black used as well. So I spent a few more minutes and found a couple of logos I thought were kind of some seal graphics and also uh, some really nice type treatments. I thought all kind of went well together. This this should take less than an hour and you can even come up with a third one if, the, if that's your client's needs. You may feel so confident you can skip this stage entirely if you feel like you really know what the client wants, but sometimes clients uh, say what they want, but they don't really mean it until they see it. So this could save you so much heartache by doing this and sending it to the client. You'll be surprised what they say. They always surprise me with their responses and go, oh, I, I like this style and you weren't even thinking of that as an option and and they really just fell in love with it so this is so helpful it's going to make the brainstorming process so much easier so instead of having all these different style possibilities we'll really hone in on a particular style so we don't have to sit here and sketch thousands of logos and wonder if they're going to like it we're going to know uh, have a great better idea that they are going to like it and and have some direction so that's the whole point of this section is to find a direction so we can start sketching and brainstorming.